I really appreciate the opportunity to speak about this important thing because it's so important for everybody to know uh, the risks and so on of, 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 of this injury to make our job to treat it better. I will explain. So concussion is a traumatic brain injury. So it is usually um, caused by a direct hit to the head um, or it's caused by an indirect hit of the brain inside the skull uh, with maybe sudden acceleration, deceleration like this, like when you, when you see the whiplash injuries in car accidents. الارتجاج يحدث بسبب تعرض الدماغ لاصطدام مباشر بالرأس أو غير مباشر بسبب تسارع مفاجئ أو تباطؤ للدماغ داخل الجمجمة. Brain is protected inside the skull because it needs to be very well protected. The brain is the mission control center of the body. Everything we do and think and our whole metabolism is controlled by this brain so it needs to be protected very well so it's inside the skull and between the skull and the brain there's a layer of fluid to act as a shock absorber but sometimes even that is not enough and then when you get a very hard hit on the on the skull then the brain hits the inside of the skull and that injures the brain sometimes when uh, when there's a quick acceleration, deceleration, then this happens and you get an injury at the front and the back of the brain. So that is what concussion is. It's a bruising of the brain because of trauma direct on the skull or indirect from acceleration or deceleration. And sometimes there's rotation also involved and that even seems to make the thing worse. Um, so now, just to explain a little bit of the anatomy of the brain, um, this being the whole mission control of everything that we, we do and think and so on, it depends on which part of this mission control center is injured, is getting the bump, to, uh, to know what symptoms will come. For instance, in the front of the skull, or from the front of the brain, will affect our thinking, and, uh, and, and our reasoning and so on. And to the sides will be uh, more things like memory and concentration and hearing and so on. And the headache will be more or less anywhere because that, that is because of the inflammation inside the brain. So any of these will cause a headache. Um, uh, 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 it is in fact the most common uh, symptom of concussion you know, and sometimes balance and, and hearing and, and so on. So that is in essence what concussion is. In sport, we see it as I explained it now, with contact sports, uh, high risk sports where there's a lot of contact, like uh, where my background is mostly in rugby, but also in football, also in handball and so on. Um, hockey, very much so. Um, so contact sports very much and then of course the high-speed uh, sports as well such as uh, cycling or motor racing where this uh, but and, and even boxing and the combat sports that's a whole different category but for our purposes we focus a lot on the team sport so uh, the contact sports such as rugby football handball and so on. the highest risk sports are the, uh, the high speed ones where people can fall uncontrolledly. So like equestrian sport, like cycling, also the high speed ones where there are collisions such as uh, a motor car racing and biking and so on. But then in the team sports, I would say the, the highest risk sports would be, uh, would be NFL or uh, American football. Uh, hockey, uh, I'm talking about ice hockey and rugby. The players are also more conditioned, they are stronger, uh, especially uh, the neck muscles and the shoulder muscles and that protects the brain to a certain extent because it, it protects it from the sudden acceleration and so on. So uh, yes, and we also see more uh, concussions these days because of the higher um, impacts of sport, but uh, 
players are better conditioned. Um, maybe just to talk for a minute about how can we protect the brain or, uh, from concussion or try and prevent concussions. We can never present, prevent it 100% because of the nature of the sports, as you mentioned. But with proper conditioning, we see that people who are poorly conditioned or unfit are more prone to concussion. Um, we see that if we teach proper technique, like in the contact situation, the tackling technique and sliding techniques and so on, if the technique is correct, then we can reduce the amount of concussion quite a lot. And then also with protective gear such as mouth guards, it will not pre prevent a concussion, but it might reduce the severity of the concussion because of uh, shock absorption uh, inside the, the mouth guard. Um, there's a lot of work being done in, in hockey, also in, uh, in NFL and, 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 uh, and other American football, um, on helmets to be protective. That unfortunately have not been very successful yet because the helmet protects the outside of the skull and the problem with the brain as I explained to you is between the brain and the inside of the skull so the helmet cannot reduce the speed uh, so it has not been as protective as people would like to be like it to be maybe someday concussion is treated relatively poorly uh, in sport across many parts of the world still. Uh, and we see that concussion is not recognized well. So um, as I explained to you, it is sometimes a minimal brain injury that does not have many symptoms and signs. People don't have to lose consciousness to be diagnosed with concussion and we can go through the symptoms if you want. Um, so it's a, difficult, it's a difficult injury to detect. The injury causes something like a headache or a little bit singing in the ears or a little bit double vision or something. It's easy for an athlete not to report that to the to the doctor or to the coach because no no athlete wants to admit to injury they want to stay on the field so sometimes they hide the injury from us and that makes it very difficult so that gives us a big responsibility as medical personnel but also as coaching staff technical staff referees even the public parents to be able to recognize this because if we as medical people cannot recognize this injury, then we cannot prevent it or we cannot, we cannot treat it well. And why I'm saying this is the first treatment of concussion is to recognize it and to remove a player from play because that is how you prevent complications. All the serious complications or most of the serious complications by far comes from when a player continues playing or training when he has concussion. So there are three big complications of concussion. The first one is short term. It's called the second impact syndrome. So if somebody gets a concussion and a bump to the head and he gets a second bump because he continues playing or he goes back before this first bruised brain has healed then that second impact can cause a massive swelling of the brain and massive dysfunction and that is a very very serious thing it is rare thank you but uh, it is it's a very serious problem and it can it can be fatal it can cause permanent brain damage we don't want to see that in our uh, teams uh, here in Qatar the second one is a medium term complication called prolonged symptom complex or post-concussion syndrome there are many names for it but that is when these symptoms of concussion does not go away for a month or more sometimes for more than a year so that means that people can sit after a concussion with 
memory problems and concentration problems for many months. Now, can you imagine somebody has to go to school or to work and he cannot think? So it is very important to prevent that. The second uh, type, uh, type of uh, post-concussion that can happen is people can have mood disturbances. So like they can be depressed. And we mentioned before, uh, concussion is sometimes associated with suicide because of concussion-related depression. But then the last one, which is also something that became well known in the NFL, is the so-called uh, chronic traumatic uh, encephalopathy, CTE it is called. So that happens many years after people have had concussions. It seems that um, that is uh, many concussions is associated with um, early onset degenerative brain disease. So like dementia or it looks like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's. So relatively young people in their 40s and so on, they start losing their minds. And it seems that it is associated with concussions that have been treated, not, have been, uh, treated poorly or not treated at all. And that is why it is so important for us to recognize this. People, it is very, very difficult to, to associate something directly that happened 20 years ago. If you played NFL or whatever, boxing, 20 years ago, and now you have a, an early onset Alzheimer's, it is a very difficult connection to make without proof that that has caused this, because what I, many other things could have happened in the 20 years in between like drug abuse, car accidents, whatever, life happens. But it looks like there's more and more evidence to relate it directly. The Parkinsonism that, uh, that Muhammad Ali uh, developed is probably related to repetitive concussions in, in his boxing career. Very difficult to show the direct uh, relationship, but it just makes sense if we see what has been shown in uh, in NFL and other sports now with, with, with the CTE that we discussed. So Parkinson's is also a form of uh, degenerative brain disease and it is most probably related to previous concussions. Michael Schumacher had a traumatic brain injury but as I explained to you the spectrum of traumatic brain injury concussion is mild and minimal traumatic brain injury. What Schumacher had was a severe brain injury. So his, um, his trauma is probably irreversible. I don't know because I haven't seen his medical records, but, but it is a much more severe variety of the same thing. Fortunately, sport-related concussion, uh, if treated properly, can recover 100%. We at Aspetar took the opportunity to take the lead, especially in the World Cup 2022 build-up, to set the example and to take the lead to provide the best possible care for our athletes in the QSL and the other football leagues and also the other sports leagues to show people how it should be done. Um, and I must say, this is not something that I can do with my medical team. Concussion care is something that is the responsibility of everybody involved in sport. There needs to be very good communication and most of all trust between the player, the medical staff and the coaching staff because they all must be in agreement that concussion needs to be treated properly. If the player hides it or the coach ignores it, then I can do nothing. So we are trying to build those bridges by doing a very extensive um, information and educational campaign starting in QSL and we will, uh, we will develop it into the other sports so that everybody understands what the two of us are discussing today. Um, this is an internationally used little card, it's called the Concussion Recognition Tool. And this is not for medical personnel, this is for technical staff, the public, parents, anybody who wants to recognize. If you think somebody is maybe concussed because you saw 
him or her getting a bump against the head uh, in training or in playing. This is available on our website on www.aspatar.com or you can speak to our uh, HR department. It's available in English and in Arabic and um, it shows all the recognizable signs and symptoms of concussion and you can keep it in your pocket or handbag or whatever. If you are concerned, look at this thing and decide what to do. In my mind, the only way to, to address this is to convince senior management and policy makers, the real decision makers in a sport, to understand the seriousness of this and the risk that, uh, that concussion poses to um, the future of that particular sport. So for us, we start with education. Um, and we start with education at, across the board, from senior management, which we have convinced now, to coaching staff, players, everybody, and also to our, our medical staff, our doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, psychologists, everybody involved in concussion care. We keep them updated regularly with the best possible scientific evidence of how to treat concussion and it's developing every day. Uh, it's amazing how much new evidence comes and how much how quickly we learn about concussion. Then if everybody is in agreement that this injury can only be treated in one way and that is the correct way, then the danger of the sport becomes less and then it should be okay to continue with sports. I think there's a fine balance between the risk and the benefit of sport. And if we treat something like concussion very well by trying to prevent the complications, as I told you, uh, with early recognize and remove from play and then the rest of the treatment under medical guidance, then the risk of complications and all the big problems are 99% excluded. We must educate players and also coaches and also technical staff and everybody, the public, that it's not okay to say I'm okay and to be tough. That is the first thing that an athlete and a player wants to do. But that is not the right thing with a head injury because you will end up with post-concussion syndrome, you will end up with CTE, you might become depressed, all of these things. I'm very happy to say that we presented this evidence uh, that we're talking about and the seriousness of concussion and how it should be treated and the importance of edu education to the management of QSL and the QFA. And um, they have em embraced this program and they are supportive of us taking it into their leagues, uh, into the leagues uh, in, in Qatar. And, uh, as far as I know, this is the first time that proper concussion care has been supported by management of football leagues in, in the entire Middle Eastern region. My message is that concussion is a serious injury. It's an injury of our most important organ. It can have permanent uh, negative consequences on our daily lives and of that of our children and of everybody else. So it needs to be taken seriously. So I'm asking very nicely to everybody interested in sport to take this thing seriously and to not hide this hidden injury further, but to make it uh, visible and to recognize it and to know how to deal with it properly by using things like the concussion recognition tool, or if you are not sure, immediately refer somebody to a doctor to be able to do uh, the correct treatment. But stop hiding this and stop letting uh, money and having the superstar on television be the main decision maker. Injury must also prevail. So there must be trust between medical personnel, coaching staff and players.